In this vlog series, I am transforming an old three-story house into an eco home while living in my van conversion. This week started with getting on with the conduit, which are the plastic pipes which go around the house and contain the electrical wires which go to plug sockets and lights. It's so hard to get this stuff to stay in. These walls are filled with this like bullshit stain. If it works on the hammer drill. It doesn't have to be structural, but it just needs to freaking hold this stuff in. Okay, that's actually solid now. Just had to use a smaller one because it's so soft, this stuff, that you just break it with your hands. That's the actual rock. So basically the reason I'm doing this is to basically put in an electric box. The electric box needs to stand out um, or the plasterboard. Uh, just a little bit, enough so that when you put the cover back on it's flush with the plasterboard. Um, so I just put a few holes in this, fix it in, and then this will be one of the boxes which will take the ring around. So it's a bit of a bend, but I didn't really know where else to put it, so I just have this come into the box and then this comes out. And what I can do is I can pull for cables probably before I kind of fix it all in the box just to make it a little bit easier. Um, and it should be fine. So I've got a few more of these boxes to do. Um, and then I can start kind of doing a bit of the final conduit. Now I am putting on, this is like the main box for the room. Uh, and then you have a hard plastic pipe which comes from downstairs to here with all the wires for upstairs and here which aren't the kitchen ones or specific lines uh, and it'll go all the way through so got to fix this one to the wall this one's like pretty good because uh, this wall is sort of straight sort of uh, so just gonna put the holes in and to fix this on can be using these because these ones uh, allow you to drill into a, like a hollow wall because the whole thing will buckle and like clamp up when you screw it. Uh, so you just take the screw out, pop it through the thing, screw it back in, and then we just basically push it in the wall. The only thing with these is you just gotta drill enough depth. This wall has got a layer of plaster and then this like hollow, thin hollow brick stuff they use here. So the hollow brick, hopefully that'll expand in there. Uh, as always, I'm using more than I should, like need to. Uh, I'm gonna use four. Uh, and hopefully, at least two of them are good. Fixing these pipes, I'm just using some of this building strapping. It seems to be a really good way, again, to fix the conduit around the box. Uh, and I put in one of those expansion uh, sort of high wall things, and it just tightens up really tight. Bam. Absolutely really strong now. Seems to be a really easy way to do it. Rather than like little bracket things, uh, I don't know who knows what the right way is, but what I can say is this seems to be working a treat. Bam, that is so strong. So right now I am framing out a door here. So essentially what's gonna happen is, this is like the front door to the stairs. So you come up the stairs, then you're in this little hallway, uh, which will have a sliding door here, which is a toilet. And then you open this door, and then you're in the main space. And that means that uh, the toilet is like isolated. So if someone makes a bad smell, it's just extracted. It doesn't invade the living space. Um, and then we've got an extra bit of hallway, which will keep it warmer. And there's like a place to put like shoes and coats against that wall. So that's the idea. Um, so I'll be framing that out and also working on getting my conduit around because this is going to be the main loop around here. And obviously cutting all these holes and passing through is a pain. And now I've got to take the conduit through all these holes that I've drilled right around the side to the box, which is by the kitchen. Uh, and that's going to give me all my main ring, which will not be the wet ring. Um, there's gonna be a different uh, box will come up here, which will have all the stuff for the kitchen. That's a separate line. 
Um, but this one will be for all the switches and all the lights, which will go all the way around the entire room. Um, yeah, so just trying to work that out. And it's just one of those things where I just need to get my head around it a lot. And then when you kind of got your head around it, it sort of all clicks into place and it seems fairly obvious. of a very cold day in the house um, and what I'm doing is I'm putting in the conduit the aim is to finish all the main conduit today uh, and the way I'm doing it I've got these panels which are stuck on to kind of get them to the right level to, for the plasterboard but I'm using this uh, building mesh stuff uh, and it like just basically loop it around screw it in it's so strong it's a really good way so far it's the best way I've found to do it um, it means that like even if you pull them hard on the wires, they're not going to pull out and they're never going to fall into the wall. So there's always a problem where if you want to put something else in, but your conduit slipped out, you can't get the conduit back. So this is really strong. I'm really happy with it as a way of doing it. Now I can put in um, some back boxes for the uh, electrical stuff, so this will be a light switch for a hanging light which will be in this corner. Um, there are a few rules for this, um, as far as I can tell, they've got to be under 120 centimeters off the ground. Um, so that means like, you know, it's accessible for disabled people and things, not that I think they can do very well in the house, this house with a wheelchair. And if we look at the bottom, they have to be um, 40 centimeters off the ground. And also, this is new build regs, so really, it shouldn't be more than 30 centimeters from the, the wall. So now um, I'm at the stage where I can start it, like putting the plasterboard on this little room. Um, I've got this insulation. I hated using rock wall. Yeah, it's in your lungs, even with a mask. It's just gross. So we've got this for, um, kind of more ecological version, uh, which is a recycled cotton <clears throat> into these like sort of panels. This stuff will be more acoustic based, so it'll be in between like the dividing walls. And then the thermal stuff, which is a bit wider, will be on the main walls. So I've got a little bit of like support structure stuff to do, but like I can pretty much, uh, with a bit of help to do the plasterboard on the roof, should be able to finish this room in terms of like plasterboard and electric today, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I'm already pleased with this stuff. Uh, it's quite dense. The rock wall's super fine. It folds, it's flimsy. This stuff, it kind of like packs in. That's solid. It's really good. And this is just all recycled cotton. I don't feel it in the back of my lungs. Yeah, I'm really happy I got this stuff. I think it's gonna be harder to go straight. So I think I'm gonna start with the this the knife and the straight edge, and then so no, 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 no. basically, if you just make it a little bit wider, it will just yeah, like yeah, stuff yeah. in anyway. gonna get on with the plasterboard in, right from this side, just kind of do this little cupboard all the way around, finish this wall, and then I can work on the other side. And then basically, we'll have a room. Pretty cool. Uh, it's gonna be a great room. It's kind of small, but um, for like a work office place, it's gonna be beautiful. And you've got this like, this view out of the window, which is pretty special. Tiny bit off. Such a nice surprise when he goes in and it fits basically perfectly. But this is a little alcove is taking three big boards just because the length and size of it. Uses a lot of uh, a lot of plasterboard. I'm not quite sure the best way to 
completely avoid waste. I think you can't. You're just going to end up with lots of weird shapes, which I might be able to use in some places, but yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not ideal. So I found the best way to cut this cotton insulation is to basically compress it and then just do long cuts of a fairly new shaped scalp blade. Kind of comes in the end. It's pretty, this stuff's thick. It's just hard to cut, basically. There's some bits. So I'm basically going to put this stuff in this little gap by the door. And that's done. And plastered as well. Let's put it together so it's really snug. A little bit for the conduit. That's not too bad. So you don't want your plasterboard to be sitting exactly on the floor because if there's movement in the house, like vibration, then it obviously pop out all your your um, plaster joints, uh, and then you get a fine crack. So to avoid that, I just put it on a piece of wood. But I've got a clever way of like not making it a huge problem. I put it on one thicker piece of wood, and I've got this really thin wedge sliver which I poke underneath. That means when I screwed it all in, I can pull out the wedge one and this will just come free. Otherwise, it can get stuck under there, like screwed in with the weight of the board. Uh, and when you pull it out, you can crack the bottom of your board. So just having a, a kind of like a, you know, four or five mil piece and then a skinny bit underneath it, you'll see, it's really good. So now I want to remove them Take this one out, it comes out easy. Um, no damage to the bottom board, easy way of doing it. So back on wiring now, we've done all the plasterboard in that little room uh, and some friends and crashing it for a little bit. So I've drawn out all my wiring diagrams. Uh, as you can see, gives me an idea of what I'm putting through. Uh, and now I'm gonna put this into the, from one corner to the other corner of the room. Uh, and it's gonna have in this one, the three 2.5 mil, which is gonna be for the power. And then we've got the plus and minus for the lighting. And we've got another light, uh, one of the light rings. The other light ring kind of goes through the beams. So it will kind of join in separately. It won't go in the main conduit. So I'm gonna pull these through, get someone to give a hand pushing. It's not so hard. Um, I was, a friend told me you should always use some lube, uh, but the lube, yeah, it doesn't seem to be completely necessary but it's quite a small house. You know, the distances aren't so large. Uh, seems to be going quite well so far. And now, basically pulling wire through from the other side of the room. This is a sneaky technique. Uh, pulling the wire through. It's a rainy day today, which is a great day to be in the house. Jokes, I'm in the house working every day. Uh, so my idea is with this, I can push and pull at the same time. Don't need to get anyone. And it works. So I've got to put like a wire which will kind of pop out of the wall every so often. So a bunch of LEDs of a, a bunch of um, up lights in, in series. So this is what this will be and it will kind of join back in this box. It's amazing how much like the pushing uh, is necessary. Even like a small amount. It's a bit like climbing feel I guess. Small amount left on this side. You can easily hold all the weight. So this conduit, they're gonna be up lights along each beam coming up the wood. Yeah, and it comes out this end. Just unhook it. Uh, yeah, it's one thing I have, I'm finding that it's already like kind of hard to do all the building work, but to film everything, self film adds another layer of like admin uh, so I'm, I'm trying to be a lot better with it have the camera permanently set up uh, yeah and just get this done yeah so this will pop up there somewhere and pop out the plasterboard so I need a way to like fix it in then I can cut it and I can pull the wire through and then like connect it up later I'm not quite sure how to do that but this is the thing it's endless endless problem solving trying to figure this stuff out Any self-respecting barn needs a solid climbing wall. We decided to build one with a scrap wood which came out of the roof of my house and also some stuff which was just randomly on our neighbor's land. <laughs> it wasn't the perfect materials, but in the end, it worked out totally fine.
This is the start of a video that Anna made. You can see the rest of the video on her channel. What are you doing? Who needs t nuts when you can just drill screw holes? We're drilling holes in holes. Hold on the board. Wow. Didn't come off. <laughs> what do you think of the new board? It's gonna be epic. Are you helping the building process? <laughs> oh wow. Fierce and drop down off that. I think down a little bit. I was improvising a tape measure. <laughs> We can only drill in where there is wood support on the back because these panels are um, structurally insecure. <laughs> We're measuring it here so we can measure where to draw the lines on the other side so we know where we can put on new holes. It's going really well. Here we've got holes on it. Uh, I nearly fell down this pit of doom. Have you seen this? No, I haven't. Show it's me. Got an extra feature on this side of the board is to like simulate trad climbing with like dangerous runouts and shots. Yeah. So if you get it wrong, you go down there. Oh. Okay, ready? Bigger eraser. Uh, yes. A ball. A ball. Why? Press on it. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. What's going on, Johannes? He can't just sunk his foot. Just uh, just jump down on a box of screws. Some people use bulging mats, other people use screws. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're feeling the single so much blood. Well, we need to get the bleeding to stop first. Right. You just should use a bunch of toilet paper and like hold on to it. <laughs> what is that volume? Well, I'm considering it. People think I might be mad. I like the idea of it being called the Betamax block, having smaller subholds called VHS, obsolete like technology. <laughs> How steep is the wall? Uh, oh, it's pretty slabby. It's, 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 it's a steep slab. It's, it's what they call in France. They call it a fundal de bercé, ah, which means a, an overhanging slab. Right, and the degrees on the overhanging slab? Yeah, 48 degrees. Chris, you want to explain what you're doing there? I'm uh, making a luxury pinch. It's uh, 240 grit sandpaper, so it's completely impossible to <laughs> Amazing! Imagine that on a steep wall. Times. I just broke Nate's only drill bit.